Hi everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter and that is Connor. We are going to talk about Quarry, Season 1, Episode 3, it's called A Mouthful of Splinters. Full spoilers for the episode, as always on the show. That show's getting better as it goes. Yeah, this had some particularly great moments. It just always great. Is I didn't even necessarily... So this, this the episode opens, and this is another thing that's been consistent between all three episodes... Is they've all had really good opening scenes before the the title. Yeah, they've all had very good moments, and they've all been very different as well. Like the last one was the uh, like both of them listening to the different audio and like they're sort of the next morning and they're really sort of it's a really downbeat thing. Here, it was Jody like answering the door, and this Johnny. the act the actress's name is Jody, so you know what I'm not going to take too much heat for that. It's, it's not my fault. They cast someone with a name that has one letter of a difference between the name. They even both spell it with just an I. I know it's oh, it's so annoying. But Jodie, Joni, her, she opens the door, and I, you know what's funny is once they mentioned it was the the peg leg guy from the first episode, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, of course it's him. But I didn't even recognise him at first because obviously it's been a while since we've seen him. And let's be honest, it's the seventies. So many of these guys have got these mustaches. It's not. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. You know, like he didn't stick out a super amount. But even not remembering who he was, the way it's directed, everything says, "This is dangerous. Do not let him in." Yep. He is talking his way in here. Don't do it. It's she's even almost a little bit aware of it. Mm. Like she's very cautious. Not cautious enough. <laughs> Clearly not, and she, she kind of relents eventually. But she's very much like she she's got the door open on the chain, and she really doesn't really want to let him in for a while. Yeah, and of course, this whole time Max actually with that woman that he met at the strip club, mm-hmm. uh, which adds like sort of like an extra insult. In fact, the reason why he even strikes, he even mentions it later on, is he knew he wasn't there because he'd followed him to the, this woman's house. Yeah. So it adds like this extra layer of guilt for Mac when he. It comes home and he sees it written in the wall, I have your wife in blood. There was also some stuff in fine print underneath that in blood that I couldn't make out. No, I didn't get it either. Uh, which I thought was really funny. Almost. Even though it was... It was obviously, it's dark, but the fact that there's fine print when it's one of these blood ring yeah. like messages on the wall. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, uh, so that was really, it was really tense, really, really well played and directed. And I, I thought a lot of this episode had that going for it. Because it was basically... Obviously, there was some stuff with Buddy, which we'll mention, but it was essentially Mac's guilt and Mac panicking and going to the broker for help. And they had a great scene as well when he meets the broker, and the broker's like ready to turn his back on him because Mac's not willing to just ask for help. Yeah, they have a really cool scene. It's very much a power play between the two of them. Hmm. And it's funny because the broker so far has shown that he's actually a very fair individual, but he just he's all, he's, he's still always the most powerful person there. But he does play fair. But he likes playing games as well. He does, because we find out, of course, that the the man who was searching Ruth's house last episode was hired by him to try and find the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he is playing both sides of the, the thing. But, yeah, so so uh, Carl gets the money uh, to like help, uh, to pay the ransom, as it were, uh, for Joni. But meanwhile, we see Joni in this guy's house, which turns out to be like a little lake house. It's out in the middle of the water. And there's a lot of, you know, stuff where he actually brings up to her, like, Max out cheating on her and stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is this is bringing up some really interesting stuff. Because by the time we get to the end of the episode, not to skip ahead much, but th- th- their marriage is so fractured and broken compared to what we saw at the start of the first episode. Mm. And you can tell that they both kind of resent each other a little bit. And it's like, like well, you can't be too judgmental. Yeah, that, that's what I found particularly interesting about that scene, you know, where he tells her that... Mm that he's cheating and she goes no nah, he wouldn't do that mm. it's like but he, she kind of knows that he's done it because she knows that he knows about her cheating yeah it spiralled out of her action yeah not that that justifies it and of course she has a right to be worried because after all she does suspect that he killed the guy that she had sex with which you know and she even is like, like who am I married to like she sees him do all this stuff she sees him mm. go to this you know this uh like car sales place and just get a random car and he's you know she sees a lot of evidence of weird stuff going on yeah and he keeps saying don't call the police i'm taking care of it you know so you know our head must be like spying out of control uh i i thought her escape 
and everything that sort of followed from that was actually very well executed. Very, I thought it was fantastically directed. It was fantastically directed, and I, what I liked about the fight as well. Well, I say the fight, the struggle when she like you know breaks free and she she sort of like hits them with things and all that, and they sort of fall into the water. What I liked about all of that is it really it legitimately felt like a struggle. It didn't feel choreographed. It felt like it's like they're they're landing in random places. They're landing where they just happen to land. It doesn't feel like oh they're perfectly landing there because it makes sense for them to land there. Yeah, and it felt like the things they were using were just desperation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what once the gun went out of play, they were just hitting each other with Ethan, or she was hitting yeah. him with Ethan. That was yeah. around, and he was just trying to like choke her and like make a pass out essentially. Yeah, and when she she finds this. Uh, what, what, what is the, the little building she finds exactly? Is it like a it's like a fisherman's shop yeah. or something in that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because when she climbs in the window and she lands in all the the bait. Yeah, oh, that was disgusting. Yeah, that didn't bother you, no. Not particularly. No, no, I don't, I don't like anything that's like tentacly. <laughs> not not that those are tentacly, but you know what I mean, like a snake or a long bug like that bothers me. Spiders and, maggot, and stuff. Like maggots and yeah, stuff. Yeah, maggots, yeah. Spiders, eh, I don't care. Whatever. Just legs. If it's got legs, I'm cool. Quite frankly. <laughs> what, about, what about worms? I mean... I'm not scared of them, but, like... They, they, like, I, 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 I'll be like, ugh, and I'll, I'll quickly kill yeah. it. Like, it's, it's, it's getting taken care of immediately. Oh, okay. I don't like worms, no. Strange. Yeah. Legs. Legs are important. Legs let me know that you can be reasoned with. Let's just move on. Okay. Uh, so all, all that stuff was great, and of course uh, Matt comes and get her. And I, and again, it's it's kind of like a lot of this show comes down to the good direction, the good acting. It's the it's the quiet moments when they're both sitting in the car at the end, and they're just not saying anything. Yeah, that's the thing. Like the story isn't anything particularly special. Yeah. It's nothing that you haven't seen before, I but it's it. done very well. I will say this though, I do feel like the story is going on a completely different sort of path that I would have guessed, like in the first episode. Like yeah. I thought you'd be getting oh different hit jobs and you know like I was expecting a certain show. I wasn't expecting her to like be pulled into this whole world until the end of the season at the very yeah, least. Yeah, I was I was going to say I didn't expect her to find out about all this this early. I was thinking like maybe episode six. Yeah, it, it's playing a very different long game than I was expecting. Which is yeah. cool. It's nice that it's doing something surprising. Definitely. So, other elements of the episode that uh, popped up. Buddy, of course, has a bit of an existential crisis because he's he's a uh, he goes to his person that can patch him up turns out to be his mother, who he has like a little heart to heart with, and he's feeling kind of down in the world because a guy that he liked because uh, he goes to a club and he he sees this guy that he liked and he was he'd lied to him about being sick and not wanting to do stuff. And I, th- I think Buddy's in a place where he's feeling not very happy with himself. Because he even says to his mother that he wants to get out of his line of work. Yeah. So I think, to be fair, getting shot is probably a wake-up call for a lot of people. Oh, it probably is. <laughs> I, I, but what I like about that, though, is I like that he's getting a character arc. I like that they're giving him a story of his own. Yeah, definitely. Because he's definitely one of the most interesting characters on the show. Mm. Because of the way he handles himself, Joe, you know he reminds me of a little bit actually. He reminds. Have you ever seen the Warriors? Can't say I have. No, he reminds me a little bit of the the leader of the bad gang and that. Just the way he looks, the way his hair is, and I suppose it makes sense because that was a movie made at the end of the seventies, so it makes sense that the style is similar to someone. But um, I can't remember the actor's name. He's in Commando as well. People, people know. Uh, some people know who I'm talking about. It reminds me of him. Um, mm. Fair enough. But, um, no, so I, I like that they're building stuff with him too. I, I think uh, it's given the show like a side plot where I care about the side plot. Obviously, the, the third plot we got as well was the uh, detective still kind of looking into the, the murder. Yeah, it's. I feel like that's going to be not that interesting until until he finds something and then it'll get interesting. Yeah, because all we really see in this episode is that he, he's forced to sort of like tell the the sister of the victim that oh it's been real accidental because he had so much you know drugs and alcohol in his system you know Jack fell you know yeah, he probably just didn't set out properly yeah yeah makes it doesn't I mean it stands to I I get why this is one sometimes I, like when you watch like a show or a movie 
and the cops are ready to write it off as an accident. You're like, really? But this one, I actually, yeah, it's kind of fair. Yeah, I mean, they they say, oh, he was he had a lot of alcohol and he was on uh, and, and weed as well. So it's like, okay, it's I buy that someone wouldn't set up the jet properly if they were yeah. in that state. So, oh, that's uh. That's good. Uh, of course, but I think the main thing, other than the good tension and the good like build of scenes in this episode, I think the main thing is uh, Quarry's, Max, like, his character dilemma. This, like, weird feeling of, like, guilt and want. Because even when uh, he talks to Carl and Carl says, like, if this was my wife after she just did this with, she cheated on me with another guy, I'd be like, no, keep her. Yeah. You know, let her die. And, you know, Max, like, he's angry at that suggestion. He still clearly loves his wife. And I think uh, that conflict in his his head is really interesting. Yeah, because obviously the whole reason that he went and slept with the the stripper was kind of like it wasn't out of desire; it was more of a way of getting back at his wife, like well, kind of leveling the playing field. Who, I actually can't remember who said who said it in this episode that when someone cheats, it's not actually about the other person; it's about them it, themselves. It, that was it was Pegleg who said that. Was it Pegleg? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, he says to her, oh, "Why would you go out for meatloaf when you got this at home?" Yeah, because that, that ties into that. Like uh, Mac didn't do it because he was like, I mean, sure, the other woman's attractive, but it's not about her. It's about it's about him feeling like he wants revenge. He wants. He just, I think, he wanted to get level, like even, like, yeah. level playing field. It's like you had one, I have one. Yeah. So, and, and I don't think he's even like satisfied that he did it. Like, I feel like he'll probably feel kind of disgusted with himself. Probably as time goes on, he'll probably feel regret, yeah. and he'll even either... more so that the situation led to what it did. Of course, yeah. So, yeah, I think I think in that sense, I think that's probably the most interesting part of the show so far is that dilemma for him. Yeah. And it's a show that's very much about the characters and how they are dealing with the world they're in. And, of course, Max got himself into a real rabbit hole with the broker and all this hitman business. Aye. Aye, definitely. But I actually have no idea where this is going next episode. I don't either. Because, obviously, they don't want to go home because, obviously, they know people know where they live Mm -hmm. now. But he still presumably has to do stuff for the broker. So he can't be going too far. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's, I'm really curious. I'm actually kind of impressed that I have no... Obviously, if you've read the book, you'll know probably. Uh, don't tell us. We, we like to get a surprise. But, um, no, I, I'm really enjoying this show. And I think it's gradually getting better as well. Yeah, which because obviously the first episode was pretty good. And then, now this was pretty great. Yeah, last week had that excellent car chase. Um yeah. And this week had both that scene at the start with the door and then uh, struggle. Johnny's escape, yeah. All, yeah. all of that was really well done. Like the show is, like it's elevated by like being direct, like a movie almost. You know, it's like it's not just yeah, like a network. Yeah, it TV had show. all those gorgeous shots of it pulled back and looked at the house on the lake, and it just kind of yeah. sat again. It just sat there, which I think we mentioned last week. Or is it the week before? Where it kind of just sits there and watches. It has the confidence to Aye. do that. Aye, it'll let it take its time. You can have a breather and like feel what the moment's feeling rather than just rushing through plot points. Yeah, Yeah, and it really just sat there on this house and let you understand how isolated it is. Yeah, no, it's uh, just doing great stuff. So uh, that's Quarry. Uh, apologies for this review being uh, a day later than usual, folks. We've just been really swamped with extra reviews this weekend. So... Uh, we should hopefully be back to our usual uh, Saturday time next week. So, uh, yeah, so that's a quarry. Let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. Of course, there's a bunch more shows coming up over the next week. Uh, new shows, that is, as well as returning shows. We're still in that busy season. But, yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Keep watching TV. We'll see you next time.